Welcome to worship at Lord of Life. We're so glad that you are, are with us. We hope you just kind of settle down, um, get comfortable. Uh, some folks have been lighting candles or getting a prayer shawl out, but whatever works for you um, works for us here too. We're gonna do our announcements at the end, but just again, wanna say a word of welcome to you. Remind you, you can go to our website, lordoflife.org, to find out anything you want about our church. And special reminder that we're going to have a congregational meeting online this uh, coming Tuesday, uh, the 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, important meeting, so we hope our members can join us there. Welcome to worship. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hi, I'm Heather Helmstead and I'm here with my husband Clark and our three boys. Hi, I'm Drew. I'm Casey. And I'm Jonathan. Here's today's text. Today's text is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 32. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Thank you to the Homestead family for that video. Those photos were so beautiful. In that reading, we heard that God knows what the sparrows are doing, and God knows how many hairs you have on your head. Have you ever tried to count how many hairs are on your head? <laughs> Give it a try. I'm not sure that I could do it, but it's okay because God knows. God cares for all of creation, and God pays attention to the sparrows, and God pays attention to you. I invite you to take a walk in your neighborhood and pay close attention to all of God's creation around you. Think about how God cares for the plants and the animals you see on your walk. If you're feeling artistic, you can draw a picture of a bird, color it in, and hang it somewhere. So you can be reminded that God knows what the sparrows are doing and God knows you too. Let us pray together. Creator God, thank you for creating each and every one of us. Thank you for caring about us. Help us to feel your loving presence always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. 
You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high, I cannot attain it. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, a disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. In our gospel today, Jesus is about to send the disciples out on a mission. He does not pretend that this mission is without peril. There are only 12 disciples, maybe 100 followers total, and, and the whole world is the mission field. And, and while the message that they are sharing is one of love and, and grace, that is not how many are going to receive it. There will be difficulties. It will not be easy. So Jesus gives them his thoughts, and then he surrounds them with this admonition. Do not be afraid. Three times Jesus says it in our reading, each time a little differently. He says, have no fear, do not fear, and do not be afraid. Now I've got to admit, when someone tells me that many times not to be afraid, it causes me to wonder if I should be afraid. Because, because the, the mind has difficulty comprehending the do not part. This is, this is a golf thing. Actually, everything's a golf thing if you want it to be a golf thing, but this is one. So if, you're, if your last thought before hitting the golf ball is, do not hit it into the water, inevitably you hit it into the water. You, you forget the do not, you remember the hit it into the water. And in a similar way, do not be afraid can just become be afraid. But before I get too far with this, I want to say that, that actually not all fear is bad. There, there's a, a kind of good fear that alerts us to real dangers. A good fear keeps kids from, from touching stovetops and, and, and for walking into traffic. Uh, when, when you're on a hike in Arizona and you, you hear a rattle, good fear encourages you to run the opposite direction. And today, and today we have this, this virus, and we need to have some fear of it. Now, there are people who are ignoring it and even claiming that God will protect them 
from it. And, and here I would just refer you to Jesus being, being tempted by the devil to, to jump off of the temple in Jerusalem and to let the angels rescue him. To which Jesus reminds the devil, scriptures say, don't try to test the Lord your God. Well, like a rattlesnake, I think we, we need to have some good fear towards this virus, to not test God. And, and that's what we're doing here at Lord of Life. So, so there are times when you should have a tinge of, of fear without, without letting those fears overwhelm you. But then there are bad fears. Bad fears paralyze us, and they, and they prevent us from doing what we actually ought to do. Bad fear is kind of a, a, a distorted fear. It's, it's, it's exaggerated, and it can lead to, to a chronic sense of worry and uh, anxiety. That, that happens pretty regularly to us. We, we, we say we trust God, that, that we know we don't need to be afraid, but still we worry. Wor- worry is particularly bad because it actually doesn't prevent anything from happening. I'm just going to do a little survey here. How many of you worry? Okay, we got, we're at 100% uh, uh, here. Here's the next question. How many of you have discovered that worry is a constructive, life-giving way to deal with the future? Well, we're uman- unanimous there, too. I, I know that some of you are aware that I am a cancer survivor. Uh, this, is, this is my story about worry. I had been to my... Uh, uh, GP who had seen something and, and sent me to a, a dermatologist who had, who had looked at it and said, hmm, that looks suspiciously like a malignant melanoma. Well, my reaction to those words was complete and total paralysis. Now, I know that cancer is not a death sentence. I, I know that actually most people survive cancer. I see it happen every day. But that was them and this was me. And I just assumed that I was going to die. I, I, I was so afraid that at times I found it hard to even breathe. I, I, I would take these ridiculously long walks, but I couldn't calm down. My kids were four and two. And then I walked into the doctor's office on the, on the day that I was to receive the final results of my tests and, and to plan the course of treatment. And, and, and the receptionist looked up when I walked in and she said, oh, Peter, I have some really bad news. Oh, no, e- even the receptionist knows my fate. The, the, the blood rushed out of my face and, and everyone, I swear, everyone in the waiting room bowed their heads in prayer. Take me now, Lord, I thought. And, and, then, and then she went on. Yeah, I can't fit your name into the computer. What do you want me to do? Turns out I did have a bad cancer. But the surgery went smoothly The treatment, in fact, was easy. My kids are now 32 and 30. My my worries were misplaced. You see, your imagination always makes your worry worse than the reality. I actually heard about a guy who had been a a huge worrier all of his life. it controlled his life. But one day he came up to uh, his friend and he said, I, I've actually taken care of my issue with worry. It, it, it's no longer a problem. And his friend said, well, what would you do? He said, well, I hired a guy to do all of my worrying. I, I give him a list of things to do each week. Um, and then he worries for me. 
I, I give him all my worries. I have a long list of each worry, and he does all of that worrying. So now, so now I don't have to care about it at all. And the, man, the friend said, well, 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 that's great. How much does it cost you? And the, and the guy said, well, actually, it costs $1,000 a week. Whoa, that's a lot of money. How are you going to pay for it? And the guy said, well, that's his worry. Worry is seldom helpful because it, it exaggerates the problems in our lives. Th- those problems are often real, but, but by underestimating our ability and more importantly, God's ability to help us deal with them, we, we get stuck in a place that makes it difficult to even move forward. There is another way to do life, and that is to live in the, the constant care and presence and protection of God. It, it doesn't mean that everything will always be perfect. It does mean that we never have to face anything alone. God will be with us. This is is from our psalm for today, Psalm 139. God, you know when I sit down and rise up. You are acquainted with all my ways. That's how well God knows us. Jesus Jesus tells the, the, the disciples in today's gospel that God knows the number of hairs on your head easier to do for some than others, but he knows us pretty well. And, and there's more. Jesus says this in the gospel. You know, you know what a sparrow is worth? You can get two sparrows for just a penny. And God keeps track of them every moment of every day. And how much more valuable are you to God. This is what the the great song, His Eye is on the Sparrow, these are the verses that that's based on. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely? His eye is on the sparrow, so I know he watches me. God is with us. We will never be alone. In Scripture, there are two kinds of mindsets laid out for us as possibilities for the human race. One is that I can live in a mindset of fear. Fear, A fearful mindset says I'm, I'm on my own, and unless I'm really careful and cautious, something bad will happen to me and I might not be able to handle it. And that leads to a a life of worry and anxiety. The other mindset is is a mindset based on faith. A mindset that says you can trust God, you can you, you can trust that 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 God's goodness and power are sufficient for your life and and then you can live with a sense of relaxed confidence with him. Now, if you live in the mindset of faith, it doesn't mean mean that life will always be easy. Just that when, when difficulties arise, you won't have to face them by yourself. The, the, The disciples had all sorts of problems along the way of their mission. But God went with them. And today, those those hundred Christians have turned into 2.2 billion Christians. What if they had been too afraid to go on their mission? Considering all the events of these last four months, this has probably been the most disruptive and, and disconcerting time in many of our lives. 
And, and still God says to us the same thing today in three, in three different ways. God says, have no fear. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because wherever you go, God goes with you. That's God's promise. I will always be there. There's nothing that you and I can't handle together. Those are good words for disciples about to go on a mission. Today, just as much as then. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church and lead us into a shared future. Open our hearts and unplug our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow what it means to be unified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Cultivate healing practices and direct the work of all who care for living creatures and their habitats. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, Sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations that bring marginalized voices to the forefront so that we may learn from one another's experiences. This month we pray especially for those who identify as LGBTQ+. We acknowledge their struggles and we continue to work towards being an inclusive, loving community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted, ill, or in harm's way. We lift up to you those who are feeling anxious, depressed, or lonely, those who are in need of healing and care. Praying especially for Ed Hatlam, who is in hospice care, Pam Zintner, and Jerry Lindbergh, 
and mourning with those who mourn, we also lift to you those grieving this day, praying especially for David Elhard at the death of his father and Jeff Day at the death of his sister. All of these prayers and those that we name silently or aloud at this time, we offer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who love and nurture. Comfort all who long to be fathers and for all whom this day is difficult. Celebrating that we are claimed as your children, O God, we also give thanks for the gift of baptism. And be present with Delia, baptized this weekend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those that are too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This past Saturday, members and friends of Lord of Life donated over five tons of food and other items to help people in need in North Minneapolis. We not only filled the truck, we had to call in a second truck to haul everything. That same afternoon, through our partner Gethsemane Lutheran Church, 2,238 people came to a distribution center and left with food. Because of you, people right here in the Twin Cities are being fed. Thank you. The offering will now be received, and you may give in any of the ways that are listed on the screen.
Peace of the Lord be with you always. Share a sign of peace with anyone you might be with or send out some peace to the world. As Pastor Peter promised, our announcements are later in the worship service. He already gave you a hint towards the big event coming up this next week. It is our, congregate, our special congregational meeting Tuesday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. on Zoom. So please watch for that email and we invite you to join members to join in that decision. So please join if you are able. Um, all of our other ministries here at Lord of Life continue to happen in an online format. So I encourage you to go to our website, lordoflife.org, and to find one that may meet your need. We love connecting with you and finding ways to connect you with other people. So I invite you to that opportunity as well. Our worship service tonight, as you heard, Pastor Peter Great gave us a great message. Dana Craig was on, on vocals, David Frank was on piano, and Fred and Eric continue to make us look good each week. Thank you so much for joining us. And as you go into your week, remember that you are precious in God's eyes. You are God's wonder and delight. So carry God's love gently and firmly to all that you meet. And may God walk close beside you so that you may scatter seeds of love, uplift songs of joy, shape communities of peace, and build bridges of hope. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
are children of God, loved beyond measure, sent, sent to, to serve, serve the, the world. world.